Assalamualaikum. Good day, ma'am. This is our post-laboratory presentation, uh, experiment one, uh, which is the determination and various uh, determination of density in different methods, presented by Anwar Alipolo, by Aleha Amba, and Mar Maria Norin Balo. The contents of this uh, post-laboratory reports which is one is the introduction objectives of the experiment methodology result and discussion and conclusion and recommendation density is one of the, the most important and commonly used physical properties of matter it is an intrinsic property which is represented by the ratio of matter's mass to its volume. This experiment introduces the concept and application of density measurement. The density of aluminum will be calculated from mass and volume measurements to illustrate the effect of precession on data. Volumes will be determined by three different methods, uh, geometrically measuring length, and water displacement and pyknometry. Uh, in addition, the importance of uh, concept and uh, density, so it allows us to determine what substances will float and what substances will sink when placed in a liquid. The objectives of this uh, experiment is uh, one, use the uh, three methods of determine to determine the volume of aluminum cylinder use measured volume to calculate densities and evaluate the result using error analysis okay so the material we use in the, uh, in the experiment we have the aluminum cylinder Bernier caliper, roller, electronic balance, digital thermometer, 50 ml graduated cylinder, 100 ml Erlenmeyer flask, medicine dropper, and marker. The procedure of the experiment. So first, we determine the mass of aluminum. So uh, we obtained an aluminum cylinder from the reagent tray and we uh, record the mass of the cylinder on the electronic balance. Part 1, determining the volume of geometry using roller. We measured the diameter on and length of each cylinder using a roller. Also record the values. After that, we measured the diameter and length of each uh, cylinder using the digital vernier caliper and part two we uh, determine the volume uh, by uh, volume uh, displays uh, we put enough water to cover the metal cylinder into 50 ml granite cylinder and uh, we record the volume then after that, the graduate cylinder is not very precise. Carefully slide the metal cylinder to uh, the side of the graduate into the water to avoid the uh, breaking of the graduate cylinder. With the metal cylinder completely submerged, we record the new volume. Part 3, uh, determining the volume by pyknometry, we filled a 400 ml beaker with water and measure its temperature using a digital thermometer. Use this water throughout the experiment. After that, we make our pyknometer. We draw our uh, ring midway of the neck of a 100 ml Erlenmeyer flask with a waterproof marker shown below. After that, we inverted the flask on the table. Hold marker on the top of something solid and rotate the flask while marking the neck of at a constant height. Good day everyone and good day ma'am. 
allow me to present the results and discussion in our experiment one. The table one, or the mass of aluminum cylinder. Table one shows the mass of the aluminum cylinder samples measured in two trials. The average weight is 2.4588 grams. And the uncertainty in measuring weight of the cylinder is positive negative 0.01 gram. Okay, now let us proceed to table two. In determining the density of the aluminum cylinder. Table 2 represents the measuring of the diameter and length of each cylinder using the ruler. The diameter is 0.895 cm, while the length is 8.315 cm. The uncertainty in measuring length with the ruler is positive, negative 0.05 cm. The uncertainty in measuring the volume with the ruler is positive negative 0.04 cm. To determine the density of the cylinder, we calculated the average density obtained from two trials. Trial 1 obtained 0.47 gram per cubic centimeter, while trial 2 obtained 0.49 gram per cubic centimeter. So the average density of the cylinder was 0.48 gram per cubic centimeter. To get the percentage error of the two trials, the percent error is equal to true density to be subtracted by the experimental density divided by true density and multiplied by 100%. So now the percentage error is equal to 82.22%. Let us now proceed to table 3, or the volume by geometry using the vernier caliper. So in our experiment, we use the digital vernier caliper. By measuring the diameter and length of each cylinder using the digital vernier caliper taking two trials, the diameter is 2.285 cm, while the length is 8.205 cm. The uncertainty in measuring length with a vernier caliper is positive negative 0.002 cm. The volume of a cylinder with a vernier caliper is 33.64 cubic cm and has an uncertainty of 0.002 cm. To determine the density of the cylinder, we calculated the average density obtained from two trials. Trial 1 obtained 0.07 gram per cubic centimeter, while trial 2 obtained 0.007 gram per cubic centimeter. So the average density of the cylinder was 0.07 gram per cubic centimeter. And the percent error is equal to 97.31%. Lastly, table 4 or the volume by displacement, determining the volume of 50 ml graduated cylinder. Table 4 shows how to determine the volume of 50 ml graduated cylinder by putting the aluminum inside it. We calculated the initial and final volume obtained from two trials. Trial 1 obtained 50 ml with trial 2 of 50 ml also. So the final volume of the cylinder was 71.78 gram per cubic centimeter. And the percent error is equal to 39.26%. So good afternoon, ma'am. So I am Maria Noren Balot and I am tasked to discuss the results and discussion specifically in table number 5, the conclusion and the recommendation. So let's proceed to table number 5. Table number 5 represents the volume of picnometer using 400 ml beaker. We get the weight of the beaker with water in 6 trials. So the data are 47.04 grams, 47.02 grams, 47.01 grams, 47.08 grams, 
47.03 grams, 47.08 grams, with an average of 47.06 grams. So, um, in standard deviation, we got 0 SD since, um, as we observed, that the data are close to each other. So, the next part is the weight of pycnometer, the water, and the aluminum. So, also, we perform six trials. And these are 440 grams, 441 grams, 439 grams, 440 grams, 441 grams, and 440 grams. Um, with an average weight of the pycnometer, the water, and the aluminum, is 440.17 grams. Also, we got zero standard deviation since as we observed that um, the data are close to each other. So next is the mass of water removed. So also we performed two trials. So the data are 153.8 grams and 153.7 grams. So for the continuation, so the temperature of water, so we use the thermometer in getting the measurement of the water. So we got the 24 degree Celsius and 23.9 degree Celsius. So for the density of water, so we got the data 0 0.1189 grams over ml. And to get the volume of water removed, we have the formula mass of water removed over the density of water. And we got the answer 1303.39 ml. So for the uncertainty and measuring volume with pycnometer, it is given that uh, we have positive, negative 0 0.1. 0, 1. So next is the density of cylinder. So we also perform two trials there. So we have 4.40 grams per cubic centimeter and also 4.40 grams over um, cubic centimeter. So the average density of cylinder is 4.40 over cubic centimeter. So for the percentage error, um, we got 62.96 percentage error since we have lots of sources of errors and I think the main um the main source of error that we had is the um human error maybe the wrong measurement of the um tools or the equipments. So let's proceed to um, the conclusions and the recommendations. So for conclusions and recommendations, so in general, the purpose of this laboratory experiment was to determine the density of a particular object using the three methods, which are the volume of geometry using a ruler and a digital vernier caliper to measure of diameter and length of aluminum cylinder. Next is the volume by the displacement using a 50 ml graduated cylinder to get the final volume and average density of the aluminum cylinder. Lastly is the volume by pycnometer using 400 ml beaker and the digital thermometer to get the density of the cylinder. So the three results of the methods varied largely, one of which can be caused by the lack of precision of the analytical balance beam, and the human errors such as incorrect or inconsistent readings and interpretations of results might also cause this slight disagreements between the standard and the experimental value. So temperature is a vital factor that could affect the results of the experiment. Hence, this, is not, this must not be neglected. Nevertheless, the method of using Pycnometer to measure the density of the liquids and water displacement method for the irregularly shaped solids yields accurate and reliable results. So that ends our um, 
presentation, ma'am. So, thank you for listening and have a nice day. Good day, ma'am. We are the group number four, the group of Alipolo, Amba, and Balod. And we are here to present to you our post-laboratory experiment entitled Kinematics. I am Maria Naran Balod and I am tasked to discuss to you the introduction, the objectives, and the methodology of our experiment. A typical physics course concerns itself with a variety of broad topics. One such topic is mechanics. It is the study of the motion of objects. Kinematics is the science of describing the motion of objects using words, diagrams, numbers, graphs, and the equations. Kinematics is a branch of mechanics. The goal of any study of kinematics is to develop sophisticated mental models that serve to describe the motion of real-world objects. So, for our objectives of our experiment, so at the end of the experiment, the laboratory, we the laboratory performer, is expected to learn the following. First is the is to determine the validity of the kinematic equations for a toy car rolling down a ramp. Next is to determine the magnitude of the acceleration of the car on the ramp. And lastly, the third one, apply the second kinematics equation to calculate the time it should take for the car to roll. So, so for the methodology part, so we have the materials. First is the toy car with a low friction wheels, a ramp toy car ramp model the, with a, with a protac protractor in it, and lastly is a stopwatch or a cell phone with a st stopwatch function. So for the procedure, um, first is to set up a ramp system. Mark a line at the starting point and at 0 0.50 meter from the starting point up to the finish line. So with a protract with a protractor, measure the angle of the ramp 15 degree, 10 degree, and 5 degree. So if a protractor is not available, use a ruler to measure the height and the length of the ramp to calculate the angle trigonometrically. So using our stopwatch, we measure the time it takes for the car to roll 0 0.50 meter down the ramp. So make sure the car is released from its at the exact instant the watch or the stopwatch started. It may help to use hold the car in place with a pencil and pull the pencil away from the car to allow it to roll. Holding the car on the top can cause the, re to re the release to inadvertently push the car slightly up the ramp upon release. Whatever method, make sure that there are, the car is released from rest. Stop the watch the moment the 50 cm mark is reached. Repeat the trial two more times at the same angle. So average the three times and record the average in the data table below. So we repeat the procedure for the seven trials all at different angles. Use angles between 5 degrees and 15 degrees. Based on the results, uh, this table shows uh, trial one, which is uh, 15 degrees ramp angle, and the average measured time 0.69 seconds. So uh, in trial one uh, alone, we uh, performed three trials to get the average. For example, in trial one, first trial, we get the time of 
0.71 seconds, trial 2 0.70 seconds, and trial 3 0.67 seconds, and get the average. So, the average is 0.69 seconds. The calculated time, we uh, use the uh, formula or equation in the on and the uh, experiment number two, which is the kinematics uh, formula, and uh, get the uh, calculated time uh, 0 0.66 seconds, and the percent difference is only uh, 3%. Okay, so <coughs> trial two uh, uh, up to seven. The same uh, procedure or the same uh, method uh, in trial one. You have to get the average measure as, to, as well as the calculated time using the uh, kinematic equation and the uh, uh, equation and the percent difference found in the experiment number two. So the, the, uh, this uh, result showed that acceleration of the car undergo, undergoes is related to the gravitational acceleration uh, related to the uh, gravitational ac uh, acceleration. Although the car is not sliding down the ramp, this acceleration is very close to that measure when uh, frictionless uh, or neglect uh, the friction uh, uh, sliding happen. So the magnitude, magnitude of the acceleration of the car on the ramp can just be calculated by the uh, equation in the pound and the uh, experiment number okay. Let us continue the results and discussion, specifically in the error analysis. Errors are differences between observed values and what is true in nature. It causes results that are inaccurate or misleading and can misinterpret nature. Errors are not always due to mistakes because there are two types of errors. One is the random and second is the systematic. Random error occurs due to chance. There is always some variability when a measurement is made. It may be caused by slight, uh, slight fluctuations in an instrument, the environment, or the way a measurement is read that do not cause the same error every time. On the other hand, systematic error gives measurement that are consistently different from the true value in nature. It is one of form of bias. Common sources of error include instrumental, environmental, procedural, and human. And one factor that we think in which it affects a result is human error. Human error is due to carelessness or the limitations of human ability. Because we use stopwatch in our cell phones, maybe we use it with biasness. Error cannot be completely eliminated, but it can be reduced by being aware of common source of error and by using thoughtful and careful method. And by that, we use the replication method in which we perform several times per trial. We are now down to conclusion. In general, when a car is on a ramp, a component of, or part of the force of gravity acts parallel to the ramp, causing the car to speed up or accelerate down the ramp. Because the higher the ramp, the more gravitational potential energy. And the more gravitational potential energy, the more kinetic energy converted. And the car 
faster it will go. So that as the ramp increases, the velocity will also increase. The car gains speed while moving down the incline, that is, it accelerates. Along the straight sections of the track, the car slows down slightly. This is due to the air resistant forces. Again, the car could be described as having an acceleration. So the higher the ramp is, the more gravitational potential energy. There will be to be converted into kinetic energy and resulting in more kinetic energy making the car travel at a faster speed. So far, we have learned that the car accelerates as it moves down the ramp. That is, its speeds increases over time. Gravity pulls all objects towards the center of Earth with a force we call, we call weight. The more mass an object has, the greater its weight.